you raised the question of the long term, and I suppose it's impossible for anyone to utter that phrase with respect to China without being reminded of Zhu Enlai's purported quotation when he was asked about um, what, in 1972, when he was asked, what do you think of the French Revolution? He said, it's too soon to tell. Now, I know that since then there have been disputes about what he was actually talking about when he made that response. But I think one of the reasons why that phrase has resonated with people so is that it has reflected a sense of China as a civilization and in its current government as one that is willing to bide its time over years, decades, perhaps even centuries to achieve its objectives. Over the relatively short arc of history since the end of the Chinese Civil War and in China's responses to the various Taiwan Strait crises, do you think that China has been moving closer and closer to its long-term objective of some kind of reunification with Taiwan? Or do you think that Taiwan has been successful in entrenching an ambiguous status quo where it is de facto independent, but not de jure independent? I think the trends in the last you know, five to seven years, I would say, uh, point in the opposite direction, uh, the direction that the Taiwan Strait is increasingly uh, a, a major flashpoint uh, in the region. You know, this crisis, you know, if it hadn't been caused by Nancy Pelosi's visit, uh, you know, my view is it would have been caused by something else, uh, you know, uh, either something else the United States did or Taiwan did. Uh, look, I think under Xi Jinping, first of all, China uh, in general has started to behave externally within its region uh, in a more risk acceptant way. And it's done that with countries in the South China Sea and Southeast Asia. It's done that with India, where it's uh, seen the border dispute between those two countries flare. Uh, it's it's broadly, I think, um, taken a harder stance against the United States. Um, and a lot of this, I think, is born of a structural calculation uh, by the Chinese leadership that as China is rising, the United States is in decline. And because of China's greater national power, China has the ability to actually take more risk uh, in, its, uh, in its regional affairs. And I think that's also manifesting now in the Taiwan Strait, right? Depending on you know whether or not you consider this a fourth Taiwan Strait crisis or not, what's notable about what's been happening in the Taiwan Strait is China's been conducting live fire exercises and, and launching missiles, um, but the United States, the Biden administration, has been monitoring things from a distance, uh, which I you know I think I think there's a good case for that, um, but you know it has sort of led to people drawing the comparison that in the 1990s, when we had a Taiwan Straits crisis, the United States uh, was quite bold in its reaction. It moved two, two carrier strike groups uh, to near the Taiwan Strait to sort of monitor the situation uh, at a time when the United States was decisively um, the, the global unipolar superpower, uh, uncontested in its primacy. Uh, and so as Chinese leaders, I think, think about this world where the United States might be losing primacy, uh, they, I think, see a, uh, and I think this is the core of the argument for why, you know, we should be concerned in the short term, which is that they will see a window of opportunity where where Chinese national power will have peaked. The United States might either be uh, declining inexorably, but also, you know, there is, I think, a long term concern that China and Chinese leaders might be aware of their own structural weaknesses. And that's the most dangerous thing in many ways, because if Chinese leaders calculate that, let's say the second half of the 2020s or the early 2030s is going to be the peak of Chinese national national power before the Chinese economy begins to contract, before China's um, negative demographic trends take hold and, and Chinese national power continues to decline along a range of axes, that the moment to act then on Taiwan, on these issues that China concerns its core, uh, considers its core national interests is now. Um, that said, you know, I personally, uh, I'm not as fatalistic about uh, about this issue. I do think that the ability to deter China from taking kinetic military action against Taiwan is something that the United States and Taiwan and other like-minded states uh, in the region can uphold, uh, that there are many reasons for China to prefer a benign regional security environment uh, around its borders. Uh, and so, you know, I would I would caution against, uh, you know, interpreting my comments as as me sort of putting a, uh, a timeline on an inevitable Chinese uh, invasion uh, of Taiwan. But certainly, I think uh, the concerns now are, are far more acute than they've ever been in the past.